I lie in the dirt, in the dugout dust of the desert plain. In the bunker, my eyes to the distance, my eyes to the tower, of which I climb. I am the last to see the bomb. I attach equipment, a, a measuring and monitoring device, double check, and triple check. The radio receives weather reports. Storm fronts. Electrical. If lightning were to strike, to strike a primed plutonium device. Hoisted high above the desert. Tallest point for a hundred square miles. Yeah, I'd like not to think of that. Thanks all the same. Now let's double, triple, and quadruple check. From the tower I can see. Through the gaps in the corrugated housing from the tower, I see lightning as it strikes the dust bowl. The storm front moves on. I place my hand on the device. Do I expect it to be warm? No. Do I expect it to vibrate or radiate? No. Is it a sleeping bear, a, a lizard's egg? It is metal, but not the sort that seems, the sort that sits. I am done here. I climb from the tower. Climb into my Jeep and drive. The countdown clock begins. Automated. I am in the first bunker. 10 miles from zero. I find some dirt to lie in. Oh, my welder's mask grows heavy on my arm. I lie next to my brother. At T minus two, he is heard to mutter, Lord, these affairs are hard on the heart. I lie in the dirt. I lie in the dirt. I lie in the dirt. This is where I am. And this is where I'll be for the end of the world. 12 hours of flight. 12 hours of silence. With the little boy in the fuselage. 12 hours at a height of 30,000 feet. A city of 350,000 people. 43 seconds from drop to detonation. 43 seconds and 145 pounds of uranium-235. 12 hours and 43 seconds. And if I speak of numbers now, I speak of numbers because numbers can describe what lies outside our circles of comprehension. I understand the difference between 10 degrees or 20. I understand a tropical heat of 34 Celsius. I even understand a frost of minus four or five. But tell me this, this city burned at 3,000 and I blink. And I know not how to think. I had an uncle who told me, an uncle who said, one death is a tragedy. One million instead is a statistic, my boy. And your audience reacts not with revulsion or fear, but with acceptance of fact. Can we talk of a kimono, of everyday dress? It's pattern seared into its wearer's flesh. We can talk of shadows burnt into stone. If I say vaporization, then yes, that includes bone. If I talk of skin that hangs from muscles and strips, and if I talk of ash, that runs down broken bricks. If I talk of torsos with an absence of skins, of dams made of limbs, then I talk of Hiroshima and of horrors that cannot be spoken, but instead can only be smelt.